I live in West Lynn, Oregon. I went to school at the University of Oregon, which is in a city called Eugene. That is two hours from my front door, okay? So when I was pursuing my dream of being a mixed martial artist and making it uh, to be a professional mixed martial artist, it's very tough to get into the UFC at that time. Now, I can't even tell you Bellator. I can't tell you Strike Force. I can't tell you the Professional Fight League or the World Series of Fighting or Elite XC or anything in between. They didn't even exist. I couldn't even tell you the WEC. I'm talking about the year 2001 when I graduated and was kind of in some of my athletic prime coming right out of you know, college and a Division I program. And so you're trying to get into the UFC and all of a sudden I'm watching a UFC one day and a guy comes out to fight named Gerald Streben out of Eugene, Oregon. Now, this time I'm living back in West Lim. I'm going, wait, out of Eugene, Oregon, I lived there for five years. We don't even have an MMA gym in Eugene, Oregon. I was far and away the baddest dude in Eugene, Oregon. Portland, okay, now we might have to have a conversation. In Eugene, Oregon, this guy fighting out of Eugene. Okay, cool, I'm going to cheer for this guy. But I'm still at a loss. I, I don't. I don't know where he would have prepared or trained or where he came from or how we didn't cross paths down there. Either way, he goes out and fights. Fights a guy named Josh Thompson. Now, not for nothing and not to embarrass, uh, Gerald Strebent is his name, not to embarrass Gerald in the least, but guys, to tell you the story, the way it happened, Josh Thompson threw a punch that missed by a Texas mile and Gerald Strebent collapsed to the canvas as though he was unconscious. That punch had more air in it than popcorn. And when they replayed it, they replayed it on the screen and you can clearly see the punch never lands. So the interviewer at the time says to Josh Thompson, tell us about the punch. And Josh Thompson's watching it on the big screen and he's like, man, this isn't on me. And he simply says live into the pay-per-view audience camera, it missed. He tells the truth, it missed. So how's that gonna work at the UFC? You, you, you fall unconscious to a punch that never landed. You're not fighting in the UFC anymore. Okay, great. This is just the story and I'm, I'm not kicking. I'm just telling you guys what happened. So a number of years later, I would say roughly 10. That would take us somewhere around 2011, 2012. Gerald is still fighting and he's getting ready to fight in England. And he comes up to Portland and he trains with us for a week. I would tell you, he was a hell of a nice guy. And I want to say he was a brown belt at that time under Eddie Bravo. I could be wrong and he was black. But I knew the first day I trained with him and he was playing, he was going to train with us for a week. Then he was going to, going to get on an airplane, fly out to England, be there for a week and then fight the following week. I knew within 10 minutes of the first time I trained with him, there is zero chance he gets on that airplane. And there is even less of a chance that he's fighting in England or anywhere else in two weeks. I just knew it. Well, sure enough, he came in every day. He was a hell of a nice guy, a good enough partner. And sure enough, he did not get on that airplane and he did not go out to England. Okay, great. That ends my story and my relationship with Gerald Streetman. Well, not so fast. I put on shows at the Roseland Theater out here in Portland. And one day I'm not at the show and we've had well over a hundred events and I don't ever miss. I missed a show. And I get a phone call from my mother and she says, look, there was a fight and it was ugly and it involved Mike. Now, Mike is a 68-year-old man who actually, with his bare hands, built the cage. So every show that we have, Mike comes in and puts that cage together. Then he operates the door, right? Somebody's got to open the door in between rounds. Somebody's got to open the door, and the fighter's going to, they got to close it, and then they got to properly secure it. It's Mike. That is his baby. He doesn't let anybody else do it. Nobody's ever touched that cage but him, and everybody knows Mike's cage, Mike's rules. Somewhere Mike, 68-year-old Mike, gets in a fight with somebody and Mike wins. Mike wins the fight. That's the good news. And then it gets broken up. Well, I come to find out it was against Gerald Streben. And I'm scratching my head going, wait a minute. This guy was a Marine. This guy's 38 years old. This guy fought in the UFC. This guy's got a black belt under Eddie Brown. What do you mean Mike beat him? Yeah, Mike won the fight. It was real quick, but Mike got on top and security stepped in and broke it up. Okay, fine. But if you cross Mike, you are never coming back in that building. So they escort Gerald out of the building and Gerald says, hey, 
I'll go, but I got a bag downstairs. Now, this is a three-story building. So security has to go down three stories, three floors to find Gerald's bag, of which they find exactly what it looked like, exactly where Gerald said it was. Problem, it was unzipped, it was wide open, and right on top is a locked and loaded 45 Magnum. Gerald has now got a lifetime ban, okay? And he was this close to going to jail, but the owner of the venue didn't want that heat. So he just goes, beat it and don't come back. And Gerald did have a carry permit. I mean, he was a Marine. He did everything right. He had the carry permit. But why in the hell he brought a 45 into the Roseland, cocked, locked, and loaded, and why he would leave that in a bag, unattended, three floors? To, I have no idea. The guy, when I met him and what I knew about him, he was a very nice guy. The fight game wasn't for him, but he was a solidly decent person. He served the country. This is all I know about him. Okay, let's chalk it up to Gerald made a mistake and move on. Move on with our lives. That's where I think this story is going to conclude. And I now know that you won't see Gerald at the fights anymore. And okay. No, not so fast because two weeks later, Gerald ends up in some kind of a traffic altercation in Eugene at two in the afternoon, which is relevant to the story because now you're talking about broad daylight. He gets out of his car. The other guy gets out of his car. The guy's daughter stays in the car. This guy's in his late 50s. Again, Gerald, a black belt, a UFC veteran, a Marine, somewhere decides he's scared that right here in broad daylight, with a nearly 60-year-old man yelling whatever he yelled in traffic, Gerald returns to his car, gets the very same 45 caliber, and puts one in the guy. Guy dies. Gerald gets locked up. Now, if I'm on that jury, even if I like Gerald, Gerald's going to have to sit. I just can't let that slide. This guy is unarmed in broad daylight. He is twice your age and untrained, and you are a Marine cage-fighting black belt. I can't let it go. You got to sit. So Gerald sits. Gerald then gets out. Okay, he does like five years of like an eight-year bid because he claims self-defense. And that's a really tough one. That's a really tough one to go, look, this guy shouted at me and I was scared. So I retreated to my car, got a weapon, drew down. I mean, it really, you went back to the car. How about you get in the car, shut the door, put it in drive and leave? Wasn't a whole lot of room there, but there was enough room that I think he got like seven and a half to eight years and only had to serve five. Okay, great. Gerald gets out. Within 10 months, Gerald is back in handcuffs because in the meanwhile of being released, he went and started teaching classes at the 10th Planet Jiu-Jitsu Gym in Eugene, Oregon, and somewhere got handsy with an underage student. So Gerald's locked back up, but the whole reason I brought this story up and the whole reason I asked Matt Powell about it is because Matt currently lives in Eugene, and even though us MMA fans have been reading about this, Bloody Elbow, MMA made it, they've been doing articles on this from the beginning. Ah, Gerald's in sentencing. Ah, Gerald's in trial. Ah, Gerald's locked up and he's going back in. Okay. But I was asking Matt about it because I was just wondering if this was big news in Eugene where he currently lives, and he said, yeah, it is. He said, I didn't know him for any of the reasons you just said about the Roseland and the 45 and the, I don't know, UFC and Marine. I didn't know any of that. But yes, he has been the front page of our paper and on our local news every single night for about four months now because of the trial and everything that he was going through. So I gave him the backstory. I told him about, you know, what happened in our, our promotion. I told him about what happened with the popcorn punch with Josh Thompson. And he thought it was a good story. He told me I should pass it on to you guys, but I had one more.